Good morning. Welcome to the twice biannual podcast that we tend to do before our auctions. Um, we have a fantastic series of auctions uh, this spring. Uh, with um, we we'll start off with the Ibrahim Salem collection, and I'm sure most collectors are well aware of Ibrahim's name. It's synonymous with quality in in world paper money. Um, we sold Ibrahim's general world and his African collections, and now we're moving on to his British Commonwealth, probably Ibrahim's favourite series. Um, and this will be sold part one and part two in April and October this year. And I bought a couple of things just to illustrate what Ibrahim was trying to do with his Commonwealth notes. A British Guiana $20 super rare note um, with a picture of a local scene, the Kaitao Falls in the middle, a toucan in the arms, a very rare note but just speaks volumes for the British Commonwealth issues. Um, and probably one of my favourite notes of Ibrahim's, uh, and I remember this very fondly because I had to go and collect it in Bermuda, which is someone has to do it and I was <laughs> decided to go. It's the brown five pound note. Those of you who are familiar with the series, the five pound Bermuda notes are always orange. This happens to be brown and you probably can't see from the camera, but um, the serial number is A000001 and it's from the collection of the late premier of Bermuda, David Saul. And I can remember Ibrahim coming to the auction and I didn't know whether Ibrahim was going to buy or not because obviously he keeps his powder dry so to speak and he bought a lot of Bermuda notes and I remember he was delighted with this one particularly so absolutely fantastic banknote. After Ibrahim's collection uh, we move on to the world sale and this year we're very fortunate in having several private collections contained in the auction um, and my colleagues here, Robert, Elaine and Arnas, will be discussing various notes. Um, but I thought I would just mention specifically the Doctors Joanne and Edward Dower collection of Burma, India and Ceylon. Ed Dower's name, rather like uh, Ibrahim Salem, is very well known in the banknote world. His Indian banknotes are a wonderful collection, probably one of the best collections extant. I always say probably because the moment you say it is the best one, <laughs> someone turns up a better collection. So in our opinion, it's certainly one of the best collections extant. And I bought a couple of notes along to show you here. The two rupee eight Anna is an iconic Indian note because the denomination is so peculiar. It's like having a six shilling note or a four dollar bill. You know, they do exist, but they're not easy to find. Uh, this is a particularly good example, and uh, the Indian market is strong at present. There's a lot of interest in India, um, long overdue, um, but it's a, a very, very good market, and this is a wonderful note, and I think we should see some spirited bidding. But if you want a note that really speaks volumes for British Commonwealth issues and and high denomination notes, this is a George V thousand rupee. Well, a thousand rupees while George V was on the throne, was an enormous amount of money in India. Uh, and Indian notes tend to get fairly well circulated. The condition of this note is fantastic. It's a handsome piece of piece of paper. And it it's, tells you everything you need to know about the Indian Indian collector market and the, and the notes they produce. So these are two of the notes in, in the Dower collection. But as I say, it's a wonderful collection and well worth looking out for, even if you're not a collector of Salon, Burma or India. They are wonderful things. So I think the next person, I'll pass you on now to, I think Robert's going to say a few words about one or two other items. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Barnaby. Uh, yes, I have chosen two lots to briefly discuss with you, both of the other properties section in our world sale. Uh, my colleagues are going to discuss some of the other uh, sort of personal collections that are on offer. Now, the first thing I'm going to discuss is this absolutely stunning Zanzibar government colour trial. This is particularly exciting um, for, for many reasons. Uh, it's difficult to know where to start, in fact. Um, firstly, the date is very, very important indeed. And I think this is probably the most crucial aspect of why this is such uh, an exceptional note. Now, the date on it is 1st of February 1928. Now that is a date you just do not see on this type of Zanzibar note. You usually see 1908 
Um, it is possible that this, therefore, is the only example extant today with the date 1928. Um, we certainly don't know of another. That said, as Barnaby has just mentioned, you say that and then another one comes along. I mean, if we don't know so, of another, there isn't another there one. Isn't another. <laughs> um, so it is absolutely stunning for that reason. Also, the colours are particularly beautiful, I think. You have this sort of very nice pale orange and yellow design around the centre. You have a, a dow in full sail, I believe that's how it's described in the catalogue, uh, at left as you look at it. And then at right, as you look at it, we have a group of farmers um, harvesting cloves. And when I went, went round the department the other day and I asked a couple of colleagues, what, what are they doing? And uh, no one guessed harvesting cloves. Um, <laughs> and it's a slightly obscure thing, I think, to be harvesting. But uh, harvesting cloves they are. So that is the design. And the other interesting thing about this, as I said, it is a specimen colour trial. It came out of Waterloo and Sons specimen book um, that was located last year. And we have, uh, you'll have noticed if you're a regular viewer or certainly a regular attendee of Spink Auctions, you may well have noticed in previous sales some of these specimens, these Waterloo specimens being sold. So this is another example from that book. Um, and it has got a lot of interest already and we are expecting as with the two rupees eight Anna's note, some very spirited bidding on the day, uh, hopefully through all mediums of uh, in the room, telephone and online. So that is the Zanzibar note. Now, the second group I'm going to talk about as one lot uh, are to me particularly fascinating. Now, again, if you're a regular viewer, you will know that I enjoy talking about my military history when it comes you to You certainly do, you certainly do. <laughs> <laughs> Let it not be said that I don't enjoy doing yeah, that. Yeah. So this is a historically fascinating set of uh, siege money from the siege of Khartoum during the 1880s. In fact, the siege lasted from March 1884 to January 1885. And again, for those of you who might know your colonial uh, history, uh, you may know the name of General Charles Chinese Gordon, as he was known, um, who defended the city of Khartoum against the forces of the Mad Mahdi. Slightly politically incorrect. Well, yeah, that, 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 the allegedly <laughs> Mad Mahdi. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, against yeah. the forces of the Mahdi, who essentially had launched this um, crusade to expel the uh, colonial forces from Egypt. Now, whilst the siege was going on, Gordon had this, these um, banknotes printed for the payment of, to pay the merchants and indeed soldiers in the Khartoum garrison. And uh, it's, when you think about it, it's really quite astonishing that these things survived because obviously think about it being Egypt, you know, it's very hot. Um, paper doesn't necessarily survive terribly well in hot climates. Also, I mean, they were besieged. It was this was a time of war. Uh, how you know paper survived in actually as remarkably good condition as some of these notes are, really, really is astonishing. They come, you know, in not uncirculated condition, but certainly extremely fine. And you know, they're not in pieces. They're not heavily creased or folded. Um, and they come in every denomination. This covers every denomination except the one piastre note and the 50 pound note. Now those are the two rarest notes you can possibly find and you just never see them. Even in a collection as comprehensive as this, they are virtually unobtainable. Hen's teeth, I think is the expression. Exactly, yeah. exactly. <laughs> uh, and so to have a collection like this, almost complete, is pretty much as good as you can get if you collect siege notes. The other interesting thing about this is that it comes with a little envelope which says on it the palace khartoum on the reverse on the other side rather set number 37 now again to find a set like this with an original envelope you just don't you just don't come across them um and it's just a lovely lovely group now the end result is of course some of you will know is that uh the mahdi's forces ended up uh capturing khartoum 
and rather brutally killing General Gordon and uh, decapitating him and uh, leaving his head at the feet of the Mahdi. Uh, however, G Gordon's death was avenged. Um, General Kitchener, soon to gain fame obviously during the First World War, led a force of retribution which went down the Nile and dealt with the Mahdi and his followers. The final point I will mention about these notes before handing over to one of my colleagues is that there are two slightly different signatures on them. Firstly, a note with the actual signature of General Gordon himself on it. Again, another really fascinating point about these banknotes. And secondly, a note with what's called a hectographic signature, basically a, an imprint or a, a copy of his signature. And it's really quite amusing to think that even at the time of the siege, the notes personally signed by Gordon were considered the proper banknotes. Uh, people didn't like receiving the ones with the copy signatures because they felt they were less valuable. So there we are, a lovely group that's coming up in our world sale, and I certainly hope that it's going to do rather well, both for banknote collectors and military historians. I will now pass over, I think, to my colleague Arnus. Thank you very much, Robert. That was very nice, extensive very part of the history. Very yes, educational. I learned yeah, yeah. a lot. Of I that. always learn something listening to Robert. Always. Yes, yeah. always. <laughs> I have two lots from a collection of Michel Muzinski, which was started by his father, Maurice Muzinski, 60 years ago. And they have a brilliant collection of French Sub Saharan Africa banknotes. And this is a great example of 1000 francs, color trial, it is of verse graded by PMG, it is 63 choice uncirculated, and the only one sold before was of inferior grade than this one. It has a classical design of French colonial banknotes. It's really nice, you can see the design of elephants on the sides, you can see the sunset on the horizon, there's a steamship, and just a brilliant banknote. Uh, it is super rare and we are offering it at three to four thousand pounds. So a great op opportunity to purchase it. It is going to be on 18th of April Yes, in our world sale. And the second note I have, it is a superb color, 5,000 francs issued in Banque Centrale de Mali, which has a splendid colors, a great blue turban on the right side of of the banknote on the head of the man and we can see a group of zebu on the left well <laughs> zebu is a subspecies of cattle grown in africa and they have a very fatty humpy back above their shoulders which makes them similar to camels <laughs> which i found very fascinating going <laughs> agricultural now on, <laughs> <sale>. yes. <laughs> on the reverse we can see that we have two women cultivating cotton fabric and you can just see the colors of this note and it's absolutely brilliant for African note. So this is going to be offered in our World Bank note sale on 18th under lot number 470 and estimate price is 400 to 600 pounds. And I'm going to pass it to Elena. Thank you, Arnas. So I will talk a little bit about the Alan Cole collection of Polish. Um, as many of banknote collectors know, that Alan Cole is a big collector of Eastern European banknotes generally, and and his Polish collection I think is one of the let's say flagship collections that he has. So I think that this has been anticipated by many collectors for a long time. We've sold quite a lot of his banknotes before of various countries, but Poland was always the one that everybody mm. said. When is the mm. Polish being yeah. sold? Well, now it is. Here it is. <laughs> Here it is. Here it is. <laughs> so I'm just going to highlight um, the 500 and the 1,000 notes that it was issued at the later half of the 1700s during um, the later half of the partitions of Poland. So this was issued under the Commonwealth of Poland, which was a dual nation between Lithuania and Poland. So these two notes, this entire series is very rare, especially these two. You just never see them and especially not in conditions like this. It's in absolutely excellent condition for a banknote that's been around for so long. And because his collection is so iconic, we have chosen one of the Polish eagles as one of our cover with the striking colors of the 
red and a brown. I think it's a kind of it's a less common color com mm. combination. It's, it's a departure mm. for us, I think. To yeah, do that. I think it works different. very well. Yeah, I think it works well. <laughs> so hopefully we do this collection justice. Sorry, my other no, no, oh, no, no, oh. no, that's a lethal bank note, that one, yes. Yeah, so, um, so Ming notes, I'm sure many collections will know of them, um, not not massively special, but as you look more into it, these the banknote is actually not printed on the paper that we know of today, it's printed on mulberry bark. So they have stripped off the bark and they, I think, they soaked it in water and they compressed it and then compressed it and then printed on the bank printed on them with the banknotes. So these are from 1368 to 1399. <laughs> to think these banknotes have lasted That's for an this old long. <laughs> and then this sort of condition is is absolutely remarkable. So this is a one quan and you can see that there are little there are coins sort of strung up in sort of what in ten. So in tens there was there's ten coins in each in each sort of string. So a so a thousand thousand coin equals to one quan so and below it's got the dates and it's got um and it's actually a bit a little bit more but actually it says that anyone caught counterfeiting punishable by death so they yeah. let you know as yeah. soon as <laughs> see the bank note do not counterfeit no ambiguity there no, <laughs> no. made it very clear so i just think it's a remarkable piece that's got what 53 about one circulated from pmg so it is, I think it's a must-have for any collectors, not just Chinese banknote collectors. So it's an iconic banknote. Interestingly, in the British Museum's 100 Treasures of the World, the Ming note is one of the British Museum's 100 Treasures wow. of the Ooh, World. Not surprised. Wow. Yeah. Not surprised. Yeah. Now, of course, we were so much more civilised, we used to transport people to Australia, of course, <laughs> if we bought banknote. Can you imagine that now? We're going to Australia. Excellent. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so I think, as you can see here from Robert R. National Lane, the World Sale is a real mix of, of collections, banknotes you've got beautiful banknotes you've got historical banknotes you've got iconic banknotes general grade is very good over there and i think i mean some of the the, the dower collection the alan cole collection the michelle mazinski collection specifically represent decades of of collecting and looking for for treasures so i mean i'm sure our collectors will appreciate them but it is a, a good varied collection the catalog will be out i think very soon sort of towards yep. the end of March and in good time um, and we hope we will see all our collectors and friends in the auction uh, I think it deserves to do well it's down to the market now thank you very much indeed thank, thank you. you thank you